All right, let's do this. <clears throat> Hopefully my voice is decent today. <clears throat> okay, so this is the last part. I'm just going to be doing all the chalices pretty much. Um, when you get here, you're going to have a ton of echoes. <clears throat> and yeah, you don't have any main game bosses left or you just oh, the only thing here you have to do really um is like get the last ending which is just submit your life to Garmin. but other than that yeah it's just pretty much chalice stuff so what we're gonna do is <clears throat> you can go up here first if you'd like i have it i have it in my splits is the order i'm i usually want to do it you can repair now or you can repair um in a little bit when you come up here or um, you'll come up here to get some arcane uh, what is that stuff called some sort of dust or something and when you come up here to make it you have to go down and there's another selection arcane haze and when you come make the arcane haze you can just repair then because <clears throat> you can see our durability is 132 out of 200 so it's like not really that close to breaking it but I like to do it now. And then you already have all your gems, so you don't have to mess with this. These are all 18%. So you do that, and then um, if you needed to change any runes or stuff, you could come over here, but I don't I don't need to do that because all of mine are already set <clears throat> how I want them. Actually, no, they're not. Did I never swap those out? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I do have the ion. Yeah, more items from fallen enemies. I was thinking for a second I didn't have that. I was like, wait, what? <clears throat> okay, so yeah, you just pretty much come here, repair your weapon. That's like the only thing you need to do there. And now you want to kind of cap out all your stuff so you can buy this, you know, buy nine to get the ten of those. Buy a few of these to cap out. Nine cocktails should be plenty. And then you also need four cold blood flower buds, which is really important. And then the rest you can just like buy bulk paper or something. So yeah, the the bare essentials and then make sure you get your chalice materials. Because the only two things you're going to actually buy from like chalice wise, the only things you're going to buy here are the cold blood flower buds, which is four. And you'll go and buy the two bastard Lorens, which was <coughs> earlier in the run. Um, but yeah, I marked that in my splits, so I know to get these, that's really important. I mean, there's like I said, I use a lot of I used to use a lot of notes, um, but I just kind of took the notes away and now I just use the really important stuff in the splits just to simplify it. One other thing though, I do have a WordPad open just for the the list of weapons that I need. <clears throat> so you're gonna uh, you can see in my splits it shows two RB one, which means two ritual blood ones. And then six ritual blood fives. So we would go over here, and these I think are probably unlocked just from probably I don't know beating one of the main bosses early on or something. And I think these might be unlocked from maybe beating the game. I, I don't really know what unlocks these entirely, but yeah, you'll have these unlocked if you've done everything I've done. So you need two of the ones and then six of the fives. <clears throat> and that'll be for, this will be for the first chalice and this will be for a chalice later on. And then you come over here and like I said, I have a notepad up <clears throat> for all the weapons. Also another way you can do this, if you hit square twice, you can see the number of held on, uh, on the screen at the bottom left. So you can kind of use that to pick up, you know, buy what you need as well. If you just really don't feel like making a list. I want to see if this actually matches, because it's showing me to buy the saw cleaver. <clears throat> but I have a saw cleaver on. But yeah, saw spear I have written down. Threaded cane is the next one. Yep, threaded cane. And then burial blade, blade of mercy. Burial blade, blade of mercy. And then I have Ludwig's holy blade. And then that thing I can't pronounce. And then Chicago rifle spear, Chicago. 
Rifle Spear, good. <clears throat> and then Stake Driver, Stake Driver, Tonitris, Legarius Will. Tonitris, Legarius Will. So yeah, it's accurate. It's just don't buy the Salt Cleaver, obviously. I don't know why that shows zero out of one. And then here, this I don't even have to look at my notes because you go down one, because you have the hunter pistol. You go down one, you buy everything. Like one, two, three, four, five. You buy all those guns in a row. And then you skip all the way down to the two sprayers. It's really easy to remember that. <clears throat> Whereas these weapons, you're like skipping all around. So. so anyway, yeah, I look at my notes for this one part. So go down, get saw spear, threaded cane, burial blade. Blade of Mercy, Ludwig's Holy Blade, the Rider Thingy, Chikage, Rifle Spear, Stake Driver, uh, Tonitris, Legarius Wheel, <clears throat> and if you want, I mean if you're not in a super super hurry, you can skim through and make sure you got them all. And then, like I said, these guns, you just go to the second one and just buy five in a row. And then you go get the sprayers, that's it. You can see these weapons are pretty expensive. We had over a million echoes, now we have like 550k. <clears throat> so yeah, you have everything now. If this was a new file which I used to run on, like I make a guest file, you'd be seeing trophies and stuff pop up here and there from different things throughout the whole run really. But yeah, you hit square in order to get to this page if you want to use that. I usually, I don't ever use it, I just look at my notes. It just seems easier to me. Um, so yeah, try and figure out something there as far as how you want to efficiently buy those. And you have, <clears throat> so 550, you can actually get a few more level ups. It might not even be worth coming over here to do this again. Um, but for consistency's sake, I'm not going to get any more vits. I'm just going to go straight into skill so you can get, what, 34 to so nine more points <coughs> of skill. <coughs> Be a little ca careful here, though, because if you spend too much, you only need, like, a very small amount. But if you are down to, like, zero echoes or something, it's going to be a little bit annoying here. But you do need some to uh, open up this chalice here. All right, so you come up here for the first one, <clears throat> and we're gonna do Chalice Ritual. And the only, the only tabs you're gonna be going to really, are um, tab one, like the Thamero chalices, and then tab three, which are the Ailing Lauren chalices. <clears throat> this is this one is for this one's like at the end of the run for the uh, Beast Claw, pretty much, and this one's just to get to the Queen's chalice, like the Greater Thamero. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, you can see this cost a thousand echoes and the two ritual blood ones that we uh, purchased. So go here, conduct ritual, hit yes. Takes a second to load. Tells you that it's finished, and then you go to it again, and we actually enter it. <clears throat> and then here's where's my <clears throat> here's where my split is. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna skip that. I don't want any weird ass golds. <laughs> All right, so here you can see my splits have maybe some odd looking symbols and shorthand in it. Um, basically all this is saying is don't get the lamp, go left after, take the ladder, perform ladder cancel warp, and then quit out. And so there's a little bit in between that, which is just me knowing that I need to, I mean, this, this chalice is stupid easy. This is just me knowing that I need to basically pull the lever because you can see the boss fight is right there. Like it shows purple and then when you pull the lever, it shows blue. <clears throat> so yeah, it's saying no lamp. So it's telling me to skip this lamp, which I mean, you can get it if you want to. It's up to you. I'm just, IGT wise, it's, it's a lot easier. I mean, it's a lot, it's faster because you're able to just do it clean or more cleanly. <clears throat> and um, it's just it's just more convenient and it's yeah it should be faster as well so yeah i'm gonna skip this lamp i'm just gonna go down here and go over to this ladder the only thing that's kind of annoying here is this mob at the top because 
when you go up, watch, he's usually gonna like throw something like at me like right when I get here. So I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna go to this edge here, perform ladder cancel warp. You know you got it if you got sucked in like that. And then remember, like I, if I'm gonna for sure sort of mark out from a, a lever pull or something, I go ahead and swap to the hunter's mark. But to remind myself that I have the ladder cancel warp active, I swap to something like bolt paper. So that I don't like tempt myself to still mark out and then just pull up like after you've pulled the lever I like to roll away from it <clears throat> um, If you're not careful uh, It can become an animation cancel like if you quit out too early there So I just just to be safe and not get my run um, Denied I just roll away from it and then quit out plus it can help you with not getting hit uh as you're trying to, you know, get away. <clears throat> hey, Scotty. Merry Christmas. All right, so you see we performed the ladder cancel warp, and that was where we just went right there to get the lever, and now we're back here after we quit out. So you want to immediately jump down. It can get a little confusing. I mean, this is a very simplistic chalice layout, so it's it's hard to get lost here. But just remember, like, where you're, you're going to port to whenever you quit out for ladder cancel warps. And then we're going back to that same door. You can see it's blue now instead of purple, so it's unlocked. And this first boss is the um, undead giant. And I have splits for like every single part here, just for like a reminder. And I'm not really gonna go through like anything you really need to do on this boss. Just bully him down. You can use materials if you want on these early bosses, but I don't, I don't even do it. <clears throat> and so I would normally split when I touch the elevator there. And this is kind of the same thing as far as skipping the lamp. So I have no lamp in my splits and it says it has an arrow up. So I'm just going to go straight and then I have a ladder symbol. So you're going to go up the ladder, perform another ladder cancel warp. And then we go left, right, and then we quit out. So this like so <clears throat> I keep it on my bolt paper so I don't accidentally mark out if you mark out you go all the way back to the very beginning of this whole chalice dungeon so very bad if you're performing all these warps okay you can see he's far away from us so I'm actually gonna just quit out like this just make sure that lever is all the way back in its originating spot before you quit out just treat it like I guess treat it like a door that when you open it, make sure the door is like completely open. I don't know, it's it's debatable like what actually counts as still animation canceling on that. I guess you could say it's like when the hunter's still involved in it. But if you're able to move away, then you should be good. But yeah, okay, so it can, like I said, it can get a little disorienting. That's where we just went. We went like left that way and then we went around and did the lever over through that wall. So you'll, you'll pop up here. So just jump down, roll, and then hang left here. And we'll head towards the Watcher's fight. And yeah, I'm just um, something to split. So this is uh, this is Watcher's, which they are annoying, but like not this version of them. This version's like you can two or three shot them. Again, feel free to use materials if you want. You have plenty of insight and stuff to buy stuff later. Don't me don't me mistaken. Chalices are not this easy. We'll uh, we'll get what's coming to us in a bit. I promise. All right, you can see my st splits get pretty uh pretty extensive here. Like I try and keep it as simple as possible in terms of navigating, but I mean sometimes there's just a lot to do. Again, it says no lamp. I'm gonna get it just in case something happens since it's a tutorial. Um, it's not gonna affect anything. Because if I quit out for the ladder cancel warp, then I'm still going to be right here anyway. So perform that. And go this way. You can see this has no lamp ladder cancel warp. We did that. Left in the pit. So we jumped in the pit. We went left. And then I just know to go up these stairs. Like I couldn't fit that in the reminder. But once, you, once you've navigated these a little bit, it's pretty simple. There's two ritual bloods here. We used to get it in a different place, but 
this is significantly faster. <clears throat> and then you can see it says, so that's what the, the four two means, is four ritual blood twos. And it says skip the ladder. So we go, the only place we can go, we see a ladder, we walk past that. And then all it says is quit out, which means there's the lever. So we're going to grab this. And we're going to quit out. And then split. <clears throat> And then what pre-B means for me is pre-boss area. So if you have, if you enter a chalice and you get to the main lamp, there would be potentially a pre-lantern area. So I'd have like pre-L there. And that means there's like a, an extra door you can go in for a bonus area. And pre-B is like if you're going to a boss arena, there's sometimes a door before that one as well. That's just like another shorthand for telling me where to go to get rich usually the usually that's for like getting ritual bloods and stuff that you need for later chalices so it's very important so here's the pre-boss bonus area essentially and we're gonna perform another ladder cancel orb you can see how many like chalices are just riddled with ladder cancel orb opportunities you don't have to do them but i think it's very nice and then we're going to go right for the ladder or like right past the ladder, I guess. And then we go right again. This one's kind of confusing. I might could ease, simplify my directions a bit more. And then it says just right, and there's a door here. It's the only place to go. And then we go straight, and then we have a quit out. So it's actually gonna be here on the left, but there's only, there's only one way to go. You can see you can't go to the right, so it's pretty obvious. And we go here, and right when we pick these ritual bloods up, we mark out. You don't have to worry about like marking out too fast on pickups though, because there's nothing to cancel at that point. Once you've able to pick stuff up, stuff up, you're already you're already out of it. So, and then we have one more easy boss, Mister the the baby watchdog. He's a good he's a good teaser teaser trailer for the defiled one later. But yeah, things are really going to kick up a notch after the central Thamerian one. Once we get to lower, it's really scary. That's when you, that's when I start using materials and whatnot, but until then I'm just cruising along. And you can heal here if you want, I guess if you're scared that you're going to die to this boss, but just get up to him and break one of his legs with one hit and then just stun lock him to death. Yeah, you probably would save some time using materials on this guy, though, honestly. Yeah, it'd probably save you a couple of hits at least, so you don't have a lot of time to build it up, but... Oh, and also, you can see, like, this is straight across from where the door is, right? If you go just to the... like, there's these little blocks here, right? This one is in the center, and just this other one just next to it. Like, if you go kind of in between these two blocks, looking at the door, you can kind of find where this lamp's going to spawn in these arenas, because you're going to see a lot of these arenas, so get familiar with that. That way you can be ready. Otherwise, if you're like, you kill the boss and you're just like standing over here, you're like, where the fuck is the lamp? You know, just make, get some markers on the floor. You can mark out fast. Or warp out fast. All right, now we don't have to do anything in the actual dream. We're just coming here to make the chalice and go on to the next, just go on to the next chalice. So now you go here, chalice ritual. Now go down to the bottom one, uh, depth two, conduct it. And you can see the instructions get a, even more crazy here. Lots of turns. And this is a new route, this this first layer here. I haven't actually done this in a real run before. I just saw uh, Kanbanwa do it. I was like, hmm, I'll try that. It's a lot more turning and stuff. But you can see it doesn't say anything about no lamp on the split. So that means, by default, get the lamp. Now you can see at the end of the split it says HM, which is hunter mark. So I pull my hunter mark out to remind me that I am marking out. All right, so here we're gonna go right. So this is our first right here. And then we're gonna go left. So we're gonna go left here. And then we're gonna go right again. And then we're gonna take two lefts. So left and then left. And open the door. And this part's pretty uh, dumb. <laughs> 
There's a lot of mobs here, and you're supposed to hunter mark out. It's like kind of hard. So just kill him if you want. You can also blue elixir there. It's not perfectly consistent, but yeah, I would just say maybe either get really lucky and mark out in front of their faces. Like you can use the lever maybe to block them or something. Um, but yeah, otherwise use an elixir could help you or yeah, just smack the couple mobs that chase you. It could be more than two though, so yeah. All right, this is the beast possessed soul boss, which are susceptible to cocktails. So go ahead and get that ready. This is kind of a tricky boss because sometimes, sometimes he doesn't cooperate. Just try and get a backstab though, if you can. He's, you see how much he moves. Like, I mean, I was just, I was just whiffing hits there. Ultimately, but yeah, you're trying to hit a very sort of slippery boss Trapping him with cocktails, but he's still all over the place and Yeah, just get like a backstab and then just backstab him again or L1 him or something after when he's in a staggered state It's really easy. Okay, this part you can see It says pre L. You remember I was talking about pre lantern pre boss bonus areas So this is the pre lantern area. So we actually first need to get this lamp. This is the main lamp for this layer Okay now we're going to backtrack and go to the pre-lantern bonus area. So go ahead and get your hunter mark ready to remind yourself to mark out after this. And once we enter this, we're going to go left, left, and then right past the slug. We go down, take the first left we can. There's a door first. So here's our first left. And we do one more left. And we enter a cave, it was sort of a more cavey area. And we hang right. Stick to the far right side of this little cave. That thing will fall on you otherwise. And there's going to be a ladder just around to the left here, I believe. And then once we get up here, check for where the door is. You can see, because you can like, when you're, as you're climbing up the ladder, you can like look all around you. And just check which side the door is on. That way, instead of running around this way, you run around the shorter way. It's because it's, for me, it's kind of hard to remember exactly where everything is, so... And then here, kill this first mob, open this chest, there's going to be one more mob just behind that, or actually right beside that column there, and I got behind this chest in case he comes at me, I just go ahead and mark out. Another split. And then here, you can see it says straight through, and then it says go up the ladder, so we run straight across. You can kind of differentiate these ladder rooms from everything else, they look very, um, very particular. And now we're gonna go left past these witches. You could do a ladder cancel warp here, but you're gonna have to ladder cancel warp in front of their faces. And then you take a right, and then there's only one direction to go in this room, which is the lever. And then remember to have your hunter mark ready. And you can kind of, you can kind of mark out in front of these guys, depending on how he treats you. See how that lever kind of blocked everything? Sometimes his attacks are long enough to reach through though, so you gotta be careful. I uh, didn't split. Um, and now we have the Keeper boss. Most of the time, whenever you warp back to a main lamp, you're gonna go right to get to the boss arena. And there are some exceptions, but yeah, the majority of them, from what I've noticed, are to the right. There's like one on the left, and then there's some right across the room in the big rooms. Uh, you can go for a parry on this guy, if you want. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll go more into detail with those types of bosses when they actually get hard. I, I just don't take those bosses seriously at all. And this is another pre-lantern bonus area. So you actually see as we're running, there's a door right there. So you know there's a bonus area. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to go there. But just keep in mind where it is. So we're going pre-lantern. So we're going to light the main lamp here. We're going to backtrack to the pre-lantern door, and then we're going to go left, left, and around the boulder, and then hunter mark out. So have your hunter mark ready. So we go through. Watch out for this trap here. You can see the, the trap button right here below me, or beside me. So after the first door, we go left. And be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and heal because this part's pretty scary. 
and then run this way. Be careful with that boulder, just ran pa or just rolled past, so we're good to follow it. You got a pretty big window in between those, but here run straight down the middle and then hang left immediately after the after you can. If you do it tight enough, then that guy gets stuck perfectly behind the pottery there. If you go left, then sometimes he gets stuck, but a lot of times he comes and smacks you. So you gotta deal with him. <clears throat> and this is one of the big rooms I was talking about. So like the boss is gonna end up being straight across the room on these types. Alright, so we're gonna go back left of this room. So all the way to the end on the left side with the ladder. That snatcher can jump you, which isn't too annoying because he doesn't hit that hard yet. But just keep that in mind. So back left, and then we go this way. And we go left, right, and then hunter mark. So we're going to go left through this sort of doorway here. This dude can get in your way because, you know, why not? And you want to kill this uh, bell maiden here because... Otherwise, you're going to have this guy plus a bunch of red dudes on you when you're trying to mark out. If you do ladder cancel warps for, you know, in different chalices with... If this, if this same exact chalice had a ladder cancel warp instead of the hunter mark, then you wouldn't need to kill them. Because as soon as you pull that lever, you could just quit out in their face and it doesn't matter. But when you're trying to actually mark out, it's a whole different story. Because, I mean, the, the warp takes, you know, a few seconds. And then in that time, if you get smacked once... Uh, it interrupts it, you know? Alright, this is the last sort of easy boss for a while, because Lower Thumerian and Defiled Chalice and Greater Thumerian all have really annoying bosses. So enjoy the break right here while you can. This one can be a little annoying. His attacks are weird, but just be ready for parries and stuff if you need, and you can just like... with You have a fuck ton of stats, so... You can... Or to bully him down, maybe. Okay. There we go. Let's just parry this fucker. Watch the damage, though. Like, if you... Like, you... Okay, so you can see that stone and that stone, like, right between these two. Um, again, I don't really do anything strat-wise on these bosses. The, the two... The two early chalices. But my strats start kicking in in this next one, so there's definitely stuff I could do to save a little time on these guys. I just don't, I just don't count them as a threat. Okay, so here we go. Go down to the lower Thameru. and you can go ahead and read ahead on your your directions. So I like to do. So don't get the lamp, go straight up the ladder, perform a ladder cancel orb, and go left, left, right, and then quit out. So I'm going to swap to my bolt paper to remind myself not to mark out with the hunter's mark. And skip the lamp here. This is re really risky at this point in the run because all the other bosses we fought chalice-wise are really easy, and if you die to them, then... I don't know. Uh... But, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and get the lamp, although normally I wouldn't. And we're still going to do the ladder cancel work. Hey, Colinth. Merry Christmas. Watch out for this trap here. So go up the ladder, ladder cancel work, left, left, right, and then do the quit out for this. Actually surprised I've hit all of these, um... Ladder cancel warps first try. And this is the part, this is what I was telling you earlier. It's like, this is another room with a bell maiden. So it's like, if you. Um, that just had to happen like that, didn't it? Just cause I was just talking about it. <laughs> um, but this is a room with a bell maiden, which you don't need to kill her because you're going to be quitting out um, at the lever. So, let's try that again. <laughs> that was uh, a little bit annoying. Hey Dad, good morning. Merry Christmas. Okay, anyway, let's try that again. The left. Left. Right. 
that spider was obnoxious. So you can see there's a belt made in there, but it just goes straight down. Get hit by everything. I'd roll away and then quit out. That's probably the worst that section's ever gone for me. I've never died there. And then second all, even when I didn't die, that was just shitty. To be fair though, I haven't even done chalices in forever. Even though I've ran this category a lot, like I, don't, I never make it to the chalices anymore. Just get stuck in like central Yarnum. Alright, this is, like I said, this is where the bosses actually start mattering. We're going to start using materials. So you can you came back to this ladder, right? So kind of jump down and then immediately go backwards. And this is where the boss area is. Alright, I'm going to do bolt paper, probably. Uh, I could probably save file these guys, actually. Yeah, let's start making save files now. That'll be good. So we don't have to do a bunch of shit over again. Waste materials. Yeah, Watchers is the first kind of challenging. Because, like, I mean, you do a lot of damage to them. But they also hit pretty hard. And there's three of them. Um, but if you're quick and you get a good opener, then you should be fine. If you can get down to a 2v1 instead of a 3v1 fast, then manageable. But yeah, this it's basically going to be pop my bolt paper, open the door, then pop a pellet. Sort of run in and loop around the first one that comes at you. And try and like wrap tightly around him and get a backstab. I might just make like a save file for each chalice maybe or something instead of every single boss. I don't know. No. Some of these bosses are pretty hard. I probably want to do it multiple times. So pop this, do the door. I mean again you can you can modify this strat, but we're gonna try for this opener here. Try and get a parry. Now this guy I kinda like run up to and try and get a backstab. Okay, you can see like they're weak, like defense wise, but it's pretty uh it can get pretty monka s <laughs> easily. Okay, so yeah, that's the first hard fight. Get your hunter mark ready. Okay, we're gonna drop down the pit, go left for the slug in the cave. Get the ladder, because it doesn't men mention not getting the- I get the lamp, because it doesn't mention not getting the lamp. So we're gonna open this door, drop in the pit, look for the cave. So the reason no directions are marked here is because it's pretty much just a straight shot. So yeah, hang left here. I think it's gonna be toward the end of this. See where the slug drops there and then immediately go up the ladder. That's why I have the little ladder symbol. And then here, look for where you're gonna go. You're actually gonna hang left here. I don't have it marked in my splits to go left after the ladder, but it's just, I couldn't, I, there's only so much I can fit in usually that I just try and keep it simple. So remember we're gonna hunter mark here and this is the only threat. So let's go behind this lever and try and block him with that thing. He didn't even attack us. That's kind of lucky. And even if he did, he probably wouldn't have hit us anyway. And now you can see my splits say pre-B, which is pre-boss bonus area. So we're going to go to the boss arena, or boss area, and then we're going to go to the first door we see. Is here on our right. And this is a new route here as well. Um... We're gonna ladder cancel warp, so I would swap to not your hunter mark. <laughs> We're gonna go. I we used to go this way first and get stuff, but 
it's changed where you actually do this part first. And the reason you're killing this guy, look at that. First try. That is why I get this fucking rune right here. Um, I, man, it helps so much. It's, I'm not saying you're going to get it like guaranteed first try when you have this rune, but my chances shoot up astronomically. Okay, so yeah, there's a few snatchers in this run on the natural path that you can kill for that drop. And you need, you do, you need, to, just need to have just one drop. But there's a pickup before ROM that you do for another Ritual Blood, which takes maybe like 20, 15, 20 seconds. So if you want to, you can actually kill this guy as well if you get your first one. You didn't get it, but um, that way you could potentially... It's just like a gamble time save. You have to get at least one from drops, but you can go for a second if you want to be greedy for more time save. But you actually could end up just netting a um, a time loss if you're just farming out when you don't really need to. You can pick up a consistent one, so keep that in mind. And remember, you can quit out here too. Um, we're going back to that ladder. So this is a this is insanely lucky. We got it first try, so that's good. And I'm going to show you, I think, a few more mobs you can kill if you didn't get it, which is more than likely going to happen. The chances of getting it first are pretty low. So right, we're going to be back at that ladder. We're going to go the opposite direction now. Basically right from where you're climbing up the ladder this time instead of left. Okay. So yeah, if you just got up the ladder here, you would go right now. And then here, we're not going to need to do any more ladder cancel warps or anything. You can kill this guy if you want. It's kind of, well, I thought he would get one shot. I've never, I've never had to kill him before because usually I just quit out after these mobs, but. Okay, now we're going to go backwards, okay. And then we're going to go up the ladder. And this is back close to where the start is. You can see where we are. There's the boss door right there. Let me just go straight to the undead giant. Okay, watchers went pretty well. Um, I'm actually going to... Yeah, let's go ahead and quit out here. Make another save file. I know this is taking a while, but... This this also is a very... I'm gonna, I want to do this boss a couple times, honestly. He's... He's like... Uh, he he gets some like really dirty counter hits on you because like he'll go for the smash, and your most immediate reaction is probably just oh god roll away. And if you do, it like counter hits you and takes down like eighty percent of your life. And then after that point, you're like either spam healing or if he comes at you again, you're probably gonna die. It's really panicky. So I'm gonna try and do him a few times, see if I can get a good fight. The fastest I've ever done this dude is like 30, 30, 35 seconds or something, but usually doesn't go that well. <laughs> so I can get kind of greedy and go for L1s because I'm trying to like build up my meter a little bit for more damage, but it, yeah, it doesn't always work out. But yeah, I'm going to pop, uh, I think I'm going to pop my fire paper early. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll just pop it before the door and then swap to your pellet. And then pop that as soon as you get in the room. You can pop this before if you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna run up and try and roll his first attack and then do an L1. He's gonna spin. R1, L1. And then we're gonna go for a visceral. Be careful with the slams here. You can see we popped his little bubble there at the end. I, I had a feeling it was about to pop, so I, had, I went ahead and went for the kill. Although he was about to slam me and knock the shit out of me. So I'm going to just do that boss a couple more times. I was playing pretty greedy there with the L1s, but you know, why not? 
It's a tutorial. Go for it. <laughs> you get the juicy save files, safe net, safety netting you, so. Yeah, um, that's something you gotta consider, is like a lot of, a lot of bosses where you have consistent strats like like your sort of Amelia's and your Parls and stuff like that and Ludwig's and your Lawrence's. Those bosses were doing it's like perfectly consistent so you're going for all those L1's getting your beast meter up and then you're you know just speeding the fight up essentially whereas these bosses I haven't seen any consistent strats before so sometimes it can be a little too greedy to go for those L1s, but I still do it anyway. I almost forgot to pop this. You can see when he falls over, that's when you can go for the visceral here. Be careful with the slams, he's probably going to go for it immediately. You can see how hard he hits there. We're gonna yellow it. Easy peasy. Alright, let's try again. How do you actually do the dungeons? Never gain any progress. I don't know how it works. The essence of it is you go to the first chalice, which requires very minimal materials, and just explore all around. And in that chalice, you'll usually find everything you need to progress to the next chalice, and you just keep going deeper and deeper into it until you kill like bosses that actually matter <laughs> i guess if you're going for like trophies at least it gets pretty confusing because they all look very much the same yeah you just it's just made to get lost in and explore for a while there's a bunch of stuff you pick up that's just worthless but some of it actually matters to get to the next chalice All right, so pop your fire paper. This will, if I die, I'll do it again, but this will be my last one on this guy, and then we'll move ahead. Get ready for a roll. Watch out for the spin. You can just kind of tell he's about to do it. You can you can just you get a kind of a feel for me. You can see how just like I was like casually just walking away from him because I knew what he was about to do. Like he loves those spins and slams and shit. Just uh, that's just getting that's just having fought the boss a lot. I just know what he's gonna do usually. But uh, don't don't be don't be fooled. He's not he's not easy. Okay, for this part, we're actually going to... Because it doesn't say anything about not getting the lamp. So that means, by default, get the lamp. Done a few bosses, but there's so many bosses I've never heard of before. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of... Like, they have a lot of copied, copy-pasted ones in here and stuff. Which are slightly different, I guess. And then you have, like, defiled versions of, or whatnot. But, um... Yeah, there are some pretty cool new ones in here. All right, so you can see it says hidden, so it goes to the hidden area. And then that just means, you know, go to this room. And I know that the only chest over here on the right, on this middle section, is where I need to go. That's that other ritual blood four I was talking about, where if you wanted to, you can try and kill that other snatcher to get it. And if you do get the second one off that snatcher, you don't need to come this way at all. Yeah, this is where, this is where the secret area was right here that I touched. You just kind of roll through it. You can smack it, whatever you need, and go to that first chest on the right. And then it says left past spider. So I backtrack here. There's where the main lamp is. So I'm going to go left now, and you can see the spider right there. And then I'm going to take a right, and I'm going to look for a light when I ultimately like come all the way around towards the top. This is another one. Like There probably could be more extensive directions. Like If you have actual notes pulled up, it would be a lot easier to navigate this place. But this is just one I'm familiar with. It's like once I know it's Rom's lair, I know what to do, pretty much. Just like a little reminder. We're just gonna go all the way up these stairs. Hang left here. And like there's only it just kinda pushes you pretty much one direction anyway. You can see there wasn't even a way to go right there. This is the part where it could get a little confusing. But there's one light outside. If you do get lost here, just know that there's one light outside the edge of this area that you need to find, and it's over here on the left side. And we need to go ahead and get our hunter marks ready as well. 
There's one mob here. I think this guy drops a ritual blood for it, potentially. So I'm gonna actually kill him just to see. This is this is like a backup thing. He dropped vials there. But I think there is a chance these fat dudes later on drop drop those. So I'm gonna kill all the ones I see. Um just to verify. Okay, so now we have the boss fight. Something really important here is, okay, this is where the boss arena is. Something really important is, if you did not get, like if you do not have four Ritual Blood 4s by now, you're, like if you only have three, you're in trouble and you need to farm here. So go here, and we're actually gonna kill this Snatcher here over and over. You can trigger this trap and kill that mob right there. And then you just kill this guy, hope for a ritual blood four, which you got it. If you if you're still like you still don't have three here, now I have an extra one. Woo. -hoo. Um but if you still don't have three, you're gonna have to hunters mark out like so and go back to that lamp and come back to the same spot over and over and over until you get it. Um alternately you can progress through and try and kill the fat boys again like you'll see some on occasion at certain specific spots but otherwise yeah i would say just farm that until you get it but yeah it's just it's just a bunch of luck <laughs> annoying okay rom is one that i pretty much kind of covered the boss fight earlier in the ng this is not exactly the same because her spawns are more linear like, uh, I mean, they're just like back and forth between the, the back and the front of the room. She doesn't have much, much else to spawn at. Basically what I'm going to do in this fight though, is try and get a little bit of meter go up, built up and then just go absolutely ham on her in the first phase and see if I can one cycle her. But before I do that, I'm going to actually kill all or most of the spiders at least. So it's actually just pop our bolt paper. If I die here, it's not a huge deal. I'll just, I'll just start over from the undead giant. See, so yeah, I'm gonna actually clear out a few spiders, but keep in mind it, this may look like a simple fight, but lots of stuff can happen. I'm gonna try and get my meter up here too. Okay, now let's go ham on her. Look at her health. We almost had her. See, even when it goes pretty well, the spiders, it's all the spiders, man. Yeah, try your best. Like you can, you can yell the shit out of that if you want to. Like just ignore the spiders and go for her. But I would not recommend it. Yeah. So clear the spiders and like, you know, in NG, I was saying like, okay, you do the, you like, pop your paper, you you shoot Rom in the ass, you pop your pellet, and then you do like the R1 L1 opener, and then you go around just cleaving the spot or just like smacking the spiders down like so. In that fight, you actually want to pay attention to your meter and like actually go for build up on it with L1s and stuff which involves like you know you can R1 L1 you can like roll through their attacks and immediately L1 them like that just different things and trying to hit multiple ones with transform attacks and that way if you get your meter up a good bit whenever you start on ROM it's a lot easier to get staggers on her and just um almost get a one cycle so I'd say clear I'd say clear most of the spiders out I would, if you ignore them, you're a crazy person and I admire you greatly, but yeah, probably just kill some of the spiders at the very least. Okay, here it doesn't have no lamp in the splits, so we're actually going to get the lamp by default. We go straight ahead and it says hang left, so that means I'm just going to wrap around left every chance I get. So I'm going to go left here, I'm going to go left again, oh and there's a door, okay. And then there's a ladder here. And get your bolt paper out or something, not your hunter's mark, because you need to know to quit out here. Okay, so we're going to do a ladder cancel warp, it says in the splits, and we're going to go to the right here, and there's a lever, 
careful with this guy. He hits really hard. He's got a big old sword. And then we're going to quit out like so. And then that's where my split is because there's more to do. You can see like there's a lot to do in this section. Like you go up, you hang left, you get a ladder. Ladder can sword, go right, quit out, you go across the bridge, you go right, you go straight, go two chests, you backtrack, you left. Like there's a lot of directions here. So I split it up into two parts. That sword though. No. You're literally about to fight this Rom. Good luck. So when we come back in, now we're going to cross the bridge and it kind of forces you most of the way here. Like the directions aren't super necessary. We're going to cross the bridge. We're going to go through here. I'm going to pop an elixir. I don't have that marked, but I just know because look at this section. There's spiders in the ceiling. There's the hell dogs, like just a bunch of dumb shit. And here, I believe... We need to kill the Bell Maiden. Yeah, we want to kill the Bell Maiden here. Because all these red spiders, they're not like, they don't get annoying until you like go a little ways down. And they're like still following you. So you're like, you keep stopping while they're chasing you and they're just catching up slowly because you keep stopping for the doors. And so you pretty much go, just go straight through all this shit. All the way down, like, through four doors, I think it is. Have your hunter mark ready. And then, at this door, you... This is another fat boy you can kill if you want to try and get, um... A ritual blood for, if you still need it. If you're gonna kill him, I would say kill him before you open these chests, though. Because, watch how annoying it can be if he decides to, like, fuck with you. While you're opening one. But yeah, I, want, I just want to kill him just to see if he does, if we get lucky and he drops one. We got a damn blood jam. But yeah, most importantly in this room, if you're not killing him anyway, this chest here, this main chest, and then this chest in the back right corner are the two you need for ritual blood. So get those and then get the hell out. Okay, and then you see it says backtrack. So we're going to backtrack and the first left we can take, we're going to do it. So we're going to jump down here on the left. And the only direction we can really go is here through this cave. And we're just going to wrap around to the left side. The only reason I know this is just from doing it a bunch. Um, but yeah, just kind of hang left and there's going to be a chest over here by this little wagon thing. This will be your other ritual blood and then you can immediately mark out. Or if you're still lacking ritual blood fours, you can come kill this guy. See if he lets us do this. I don't really fight this guy too often, so... Yeah, figure out a, a strat for him. There you go. Voila. Confirmed. Uh, yeah, if you need ritual blood for start killing the fatties. And then if you're done there, just mark out. So we have like two extra ritual blood fours now, by the way, which is really cool. <laughs> it serves no purpose because we're going to have a fuck ton of echoes later to buy what we need. And now we have one of the most fun bosses in this fucking game. Bloodletting Beast. This version isn't as bad as the headless one, but he still can be pretty annoying. Okay, this this part it becomes it starts to become important when you pop your materials. Because some of these bosses you want openers. Like when you get to Defiled Watchdog, you want to have everything popped before you even touch the door. When you do this boss for my strat, it's not like a really extensive strat in terms of like perfectly consistent. It's just like the opener to get the headshot. Basically, like, you do a running attack, and you have your pellet and your paper popped, and you hit his head one time, and then you kind of adapt to what he's doing. But after you hit him in the head one time, once you're able to get another head hit in the fight sometime, it should stagger him. And after you stagger him, you can smack him, like, once or twice, and then do a visceral, and that'll do a big chunk of his, his health. And then you just want to go for, like, limb staggers, essentially. <laughs> Only have a couple trophies left to get the plat. Nice. Hey, Riken. But yeah, so yeah, we're going to pop everything here. And these these types of bosses, like in this lower Thumerian, all the way through Defiled and the greater Thumeria, like 
these are ones you're going to definitely want to make save files for. Um, just to practice these guys, they're pretty hard. It's like your stats are are increased, but like you have to keep in mind, like these some of these bosses are kind of geared for like higher ng cycles essentially like they don't scale the higher you get into the game like if you're on ng max like the boss is going to be exactly the same in these chalices that it would be if you're on ng for example but that being said some of these bosses are tuned basically for like an ng plus or ng plus two i think defiled is pretty much the equivalent of maybe like an ng plus two or something for example all right so we're going to pop fire paper we're gonna pop pellet and I'm gonna immediately run sh perfectly straight and do a running R1 to smack his head. And then we're gonna kind of adapt to what he gives us. Let's see if we can actually get it. So I usually do it right on around this block here. Let's see how awkward he is. Okay, we have the head stagger. And then we're gonna go for limb breaks here. Okay. That's... I mean, that was sloppy, but like, that's pretty much what I try and kind of go for. It's like... You get the headshot, that's perfectly consistent, and then you just gotta deal with what he gives you. And he normally opens up with that same attack where he charges you, but it, for me, the timing to roll it is just really awkward. You might can lock onto him and dash him, you might can just range it, you can maybe go to the side or something, I don't know. But usually what I do is try and iframe roll it, and sometimes I just get knocked away. It's not a huge deal, just I would say heal it. This is one of those bosses, if you get low health, like fucking find a window to heal up because he hits hard and he he has really awkward awkward timing attacks so it's really easy to get hit by what he does that's my advice so again pop everything before you open the door so you can get the opener because if you waited you wouldn't get you wouldn't be able to get the opener with the damage and uh he doesn't really give you a whole lot of windows to work with Just trying to stagger this fucker. Finally got the head stagger. I know this looks bananas, like you probably came and tell what I'm trying to do, but uh yeah. <laughs> that that's an example of a really fucking awkward fight. But yeah, headshot, try and get the other head hit when you can, and then otherwise deal with his bullshit, iframe what you can, and just break his limbs. And you have fire paper and pellet popped, which are both really good for this. Or pellets are just good for anybody, but yeah, fire paper is good for the beastly boys. You like that hot back? <laughs> yeah, bloodletting beasts. Both both renditions are really awkward, and the headless one is like this, but a million times worse. He's really tanky and you don't have the luxury of hitting his head, really. I don't think you can head stagger him even in his centipede phase. I might be wrong. Is arena's worse too? Yeah. See, we, we extended our cleaver there to go for the headshot. I really needed this stagger, so. And you can hit something else to consider. I haven't mentioned this really, but when you break a limb or any body part on bosses that have that mechanic, if you hit that same area again, you're going to get like broken limb, I guess you could call it damage. 
So hitting his head again, I think, give us even more damage there. Um, that's pretty much the fight, though. Just, like, go for that opener. I, the marker I'm using, by the way, is I'm, like, I'm sprinting as soon as I can. And once I get to about this little notable stone right here that's kind of protruding out higher than the rest, this one right here, uh, that's about where I hit my R1 to do the running attack for the headshot. And I like to look up, too. I think it changes a little bit where you're going to hit versus looking down. You can see how my character kind of attacks up versus it changes the direction a little bit. So yeah, look up as high as you can and try and attack on that stone if you want the, the headshot. So that's that boss. Not as awkward as a fat man squeezing down a chimney. I'm gonna squeeze down your chimney, boy. All right, now the arcane haze that I mentioned earlier. This is another point in the run where you can re you can repair if you wanted to. Um, if you didn't repair earlier, you don't you don't need to repair but once in this whole run. But yeah, you have an option here to, to swap swap it here instead of like right before you start all the chalices. So arcane haze. We got the arcane haze extractor earlier. Now we're gonna use it. So you want to go down to the yellow backbones. You can see they produce 11 each, so select this. You're not going to need the backbones for anything. So if you want, for simplicity's sake, you can just hit down and then hit yes and you'll get 99 Arcane Haze. All you actually need though, I think is 50. Um, so it's up to you. It doesn't cost anything as far as I know either. Outside of the actual materials like Echoes or whatever. <laughs> So yeah, get your arcane haze, and then restock means just restock on your. Uh, your this is a really important restock point, by the way, because you're about to do defiled into Thameru, which are really fucking hard. So make sure you have everything capped out. You don't have to get this many elixirs. I just like to keep it um, maxed out if I can. Okay, so everything's good to go there. And since we're our, like, you can use any stone you want, but since we're already at the top up here because of purchases, I'm gonna use this top one for the defiled. And you can see how much, it doesn't cost a whole lot, it's 5,500 as far as echoes go, but you can see why we had to get so many ritual blood fours. You know, we got the two extras because of farming mobs just to show that they do drop the ritual bloods and those bastards of Lauren that we bought way, way early in the run. Now those are coming into play. And then the Arcane Haze we just uh, transformed. Those are also used in this chalice. And we're gonna go in here. And this is like, the Lower Thamerian has some hard bosses. Defiled has some really fucking hard bosses. If, if you didn't, if it wasn't a Defiled dungeon, you had the same bosses like doing the same damage and stuff, it might not be as bad, but since it's cursed, you have really low health pull. <laughs> so I have like BL4 to your health now, essentially. Which sucks. Alright, so we're, that's going to be the next split. Okay, so here we want to get the lamp because it doesn't say anything about not getting it. So by default, grab the lamp. This is one of the big rooms. And it says go to the back left. So we're going to go all the way. Careful with this pyromancer here. Whatever, the witch. Those fireballs can pretty much one-shot you. We're gonna go left when we get here. We're gonna take a right, and then it says Hunter Mark. So we gotta deal with this kid. He's he can he can get pretty awkward pretty fast. He's really aggressive. I feel like this dude's more aggressive than most of the fat boys for some reason. And then just find a place to mark out, hopefully. In my OG single player playthrough, I have 50 vit in preparation for Defiled. Yeah. So you'll probably have like, I don't know, 800 health. <laughs> Slightly higher than mine. <clears throat> okay, this, yeah, like I said, this Defiled dungeon has a lot of, a lot of hex in it. So, uh, brace your butts. I'm gonna make a save file for this. Before we go in, I'm gonna pop, uh, Blood Bullets. And this is one of those fights where materials are very necessary, but you don't have to pop them before you enter because a lot of times the keeper is going to do an opening, opening attack that it's not going to fuck with you really because you're going to be standing at the door. So that gives you time to pop your pellet and paper. Um, the reason I say that specifically is because this fight can go on pretty lengthy. So if you pop your materials 
materials before you open the door, it's more likely that they're going to run out, you know, because the door takes fucking ages to open. So I just wait until I get into this specific arena and then pop stuff. Um, the reason I'm popping bullets, the blood bullets, is like I have 20 on me, but if you pop blood bullets, you get an extra five. So that's 25 bullets to deal with this guy because this the main sort of meat of the strat here is to parry fish him. Once you get one parry, the fight gets significantly easier. It can still hit the fan, but yeah, that's like it's, you start doing this endless cycle um, with him. You get him in this sort of like stun lock thing because that's really important because like if he gets out of it and he's lower health and he transitions with his like his his flame attack things uh he's got like lingering or follow-up damage that he does i can't really explain i need to see it because i'll think of the word to describe it but once he starts doing that bullshit when he transitions that's what it is he has like his weapon has like flame attacks so he swings and then there's like a, a another attack that follows up. Once he gets that off, it's like really fucking awkward to fight him with the strat. So you can see when he when he opens up. Now we're gonna go up to him. We're gonna parry fish, and we're gonna go up. We're gonna visceral. We're gonna lock onto him and do like I don't know three attacks, and then back up, parry fish again, go up and visceral him. Go up to him, do like three attacks, back up, immediately shoot, parry. Just keep doing this. Be careful with the walls. Parry fish. Um, because if you, for some reason, this arena, there might be others like this, I honestly don't know. This arena with this boss, if like you were to parry him like right here in Visceral, sometimes he'll, he'll just shoot up into the ceiling. Like, all the way into the ceiling. And then you sometimes you can't hit him anymore. And it happens, it happens all, all around this arena too. It's just glitchy as hell. So be really careful. Um, the thing is, like, sometimes you really can't control like your your main focus is to d get those parries and get the viscerals and just keep d doing exactly what i was doing like that was pretty much a perfect fight yeah i got hit at the end but i kind of got greedy um but that's kind of the cycle you want to do but yeah if you can keep like somehow manage to turn him and like keep him going away from the walls or something uh it's going to be a lot safer because i've had it happen like five times where he shoots up into the ceiling and then you pretty much just have to you can quit out and reset the fight or if somehow you're able to still hit him maybe he doesn't have much health left and you can like i don't know if you had a molly which you're not going to have at this point in there or something i don't know if you can figure something out go for it what i would say is just immediately quit out though and what that's going to do is bring you back right here at the spawn you're going to have a fog gate and just do the same thing, like heal up, pop your blood bullets if you want to. I mean, you can see I used uh, nine bullets, I guess, because four of my main ones and then five blood bullets for the whole fight. But it doesn't always go that well. Sometimes the parry fishing is, he just trolls you. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, if you just reset the fight, just do the same thing. Come in, pop your paper, pop your pellet, let him do his opening attack, and then just do it all over again. Um, I'll show that fight once more, I guess, but I, that was a good example of how to fight him. I just, maybe he'll do something strange and we can see how to handle that, I guess. <clears throat> hey, Fweezel, Merry Christmas. Yeah, that lingering sort of follow-up flamey hitbox thing he has <laughs> it's really fucking annoying yeah if he if he gets that off in a fight i'm tempted to say just quit out for that too because it's cancerous you're gonna have to pretty much fight him legit and you don't want to fight a boss like this legit not when you're trying to go fast and not die oh i popped my paper early on accident okay so yeah we just enter up we pretend we're popping our paper now Start parry fishing when you get close to him.
You can see what I was talking about as evidenced I just did 10 bullets just now. Case in point. Oh look, he's gonna fly up into the ceiling. Do you, do you guys understand why I hate this arena? <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't him going completely into the ceiling by the way. That was manageable when he fell back down and it was fine, but I promise it doesn't always work that way. Okay, you saw what he was casting? He was like trying to put flame on his sword there. That's exactly what I was talking about. If he gets that off, and he starts meleeing and like f slinging fire across the fucking room. Uh, yeah. Just good luck. That is so stupid to deal with. We'll do it one more time though. That was a pretty good fight. I'm kind of glad he glitched a little bit though. But he does that. You see how he like went up to another level? He, he shoots up all the way into the ceiling sometimes. And you can't hit him. I was fortunate enough to be able to still hit him where he was though. Just quit always, yeah. Perry fish me daddy. Think Maria. Who's Maria? <laughs> Who's this Maria from Bloodborne? Yeah, it is nice when the game's listening to me, trying to show some shit here. It's like if I went through this tutorial and like every fight went perfectly, it wouldn't help a lot of people probably. But showing like the good fights and the bad fights is really nice. What is this Bloodborne? I did it again. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. Like this fight's going pretty well. Let's see if we can get another parry fish. Okay, you can see now we used one bullet, or I guess two, instead of ten there. And just keep parry fishing until you get it. Hey, we got it again! Consistency! And instead of the R ones, you can also do like R1, L1, L1 or something, I think. But this is the main thing, just get these, these fucking parries. The best roll is socks. You probably just got those for Christmas too. You just parry fish him, and this should be the kill right here. But yeah, I'm not gonna show that fight anymore. Just try and stay away from walls. Um, and when I say parry fish, I mean sit there and just fucking hammer your fucking weapon like I was doing. Just sit there and have them locked on and just parry, parry, parry until you get it kind of thing. Like that's the strat. And just get them in that endless rotation. Alright, here there's no notification for or no message for no lamp, so we're gonna get it. We're gonna go straight. You can kinda hug this if you want, even if you trigger that thing, it doesn't matter. We're gonna drop by the ladder. Here we have the, the lady lady in white, I think she's called or whatever. Uh she teleport Oh my god, look at the mobs. I didn't know they were all there. I think I took too long or something. But we're gonna drop here by the ladder. And we're gonna go down around to this door. These directions aren't very good. I just know I'm supposed to go left here. Also, I'm gonna try something here. Let's see if this works. It does work. Oh my goodness. I've never tried that before. I saw Kanban Wa do it. You can actually use a cocktail on those crazy people. That's so helpful. Oh my god. Okay, and then now we're up to the freaking watchdog. I'm gonna I'm gonna show this fight like five times because this fight's fucking fun. All right, I'm gonna make a save file real fast. This guy is not consistent, although it may look like he is if my fight goes well. The essence of it is to just like circle around his body slowly and just stagger leg to leg to leg to leg to head and then visceral. Well, do you actually visceral this? No, you never visceral this guy. Yeah, I guess you could you get the head stagger. I never visceral him though. I just keep smacking him. <laughs> yeah, 
You have a whole kettle of chocolate to drink? A kettle of chocolate, interesting. Yeah, I'm always about socks, dude. You got a new entertainment stand? What? Hey, Tyrannosaurus. What weapon gem did you get there? Uh, I don't know. I can check my inventory, though. Is that the, was that the one from the Defiled Keeper that you're talking about? It was like Starship. Yeah, let me check my inventory. It shouldn't be hard to find it. I don't have a whole bunch of gems. Uh, this one? Maybe? That might be the one. I'm not sure. Okay, so this strat is... This is like the reason we got... This is like the a big reason why we got our stamina rune and we what upped our endurance to like 13. If I didn't get the stamina rune in this run from patches, the boost max stamina plus 15%, then I would get like 17 endurance at least, sometimes more. Like I said, Kanban Wa I think gets 15, I get 13. We both get the stamina rune and then and Silico got like 27 endurance or something and he didn't get the stamina rune. Um, but he had a lot more yellow stats. Like he had, I think he had less vit, way more endurance, and then like a little bit less strength and skill. <clears throat> but either way, you want you want enough stamina to be able to do this opener right here. You want that final final hit like that. So what we're gonna do in this fight is just kind of work our way around his body clockwise. All the while, we're just staggering what we can. And then we're going to go into like a head stagger and then just like while his head is staggered we do a fuck ton of damage so just like smack his head a bunch he might explode if your damage is too low and you can just kind of finish him off so this is very very important make sure you pop everything before you enter this door otherwise the strat's not going to work but we're going to run up to his front right leg try and get our stamina built up and do a big opener working our way down his body and then pull back a little bit hit his head try and get three it sometimes you can get four three is the most important though and then when he goes over here we're gonna queue up an r2 for the head stagger, smack his head, and then finish him off with a leg or something. So you can see, we just like walked around his body, we did the main opener, we did all of our combo here, like so. We pulled back a little bit because he explodes after you break something, and then we go back in. You can, this is where it depends on what you want to do, because after that first rotation, you can see it took only one R1 for the actual stagger, but I still did another L1 follow up. So you could like, you could do a bunch of different things there. But yeah, that's pretty much the essence of the strat. Just walk around his body and keep staggering everything. Do some L1s to build up meter. So you're upping your damage and then finish him off like I did. Uh, it doesn't always go that cleanly. And to prove that, I guarantee if I do this fight a few more times, you'll, you'll see it pretty easily. But the fight, I feel like the fight is influenced by your exact rotations and also your stats. Like... I've found that if I'm hitting harder than usual, sometimes things go crazy, or if I'm doing like way less damage, it seems more consistent, oddly enough. I don't know why. <clears throat> I don't understand this fight completely, but usually the fight is okay, but I've definitely lost runs to it. If Even if he doesn't kill me, he'll like waste a fuck ton of time. If any of you guys have ever fought this guy normally, you would understand how he can waste so much time. Because, I mean, most of what he does can, like, pretty much one-shot you if he gets away. And even if it doesn't one-shot you, <laughs> it's going to put you to, like, one health. So get our stamina up to full if we can here before the opener. And you're basically doing those first two hits on his front leg and the rest on his back. And I'm going to do one hit for the stagger, and then I'm going to do R1, L1, L1 on the back left leg, and then pull back for another explosion. 
Then we do R1, L1 this time. Then we go for the front left leg. And then try and get at least three hits on his head. If you can get four, it's kind of greedy, but it's nice. Okay, so what happened there, last time, last time I smacked his head like four times and I pulled back, he exploded and I tried to smack his leg and then he charged across the room and he came over here, right? And then while he was over there towards the door, I queued up a charged R2 and smacked his head for the stagger and then I just did like a few R1s to finish him off. What happened there is he did like the four piece stomp, like stomp thing, like every one of his legs stomps. So I just pulled back and waited. And usually after that, he might just turn around. He may charge, but usually he just like turns around and he goes for his explosion, like his really big explosion. So while he's doing that, you can kind of look up and just smack him. You could go for an R2 at that point, but I would just say just do some R1s just to get the head stagger. Once his head staggered, you should be able to just finish him off before he does anything. So let's try it at least one more time. But this boss is, yeah. He's like not as consistent as he looks and I mean even that fight was different from the first one but most of it was the same it's just the end of it is like like if you're doing execution properly the end of it is where it gets kind of scary the rest of it should be fine as long as you're not getting greedy standing too close just like move away from the explosions go back in for the staggers move away from explosion hit his head three times if you can um if you get four hits, it's really nice though, as you can see, because after four hits, you can do one charge R2 for a head stagger, or you can do just like two R1s for a head stagger. If you only get three hits, you're going to need to do something like charged R2 into an L1 for the head stagger, which is obviously way more risky. So just keep that in mind. All right, we'll try and get one more good fight though. So go to his front right leg, try and get your stamina built up a little bit before you open up. You have time, don't worry. You have time to build up your stamina a little bit there. Get all these hits on the leg. We're going to do one R1 for the stagger and then do R1, L1, L1 again. You can see I changed my strat up from the first time I did versus what I'm doing now. And then try and get some headshots. Damn it, I messed up that one. I compl I think I actually, yeah, I definitely messed up on that execution. But you can see how easy it is to die <laughs> since your health is so low. And this is, this is a perfect example. Like, I mean, it sucks that I died and it's annoying, but like, it's probably good to see if you're planning on speedrunning this ever because this is more than likely going to happen to you and you're like really fucking deep into the run and you can see how easy it is to die even with a buttload of practice it's just it's a really precise execution and there's so many temptations to do things a little bit different but i would strongly like although i don't follow this i would strongly advise doing the same thing every time just to prevent some chaos happening if you can but i'm always trying to experiment with stuff i can't help myself Three, back up, R1, L1 on the leg. Sometimes you get a stagger and two hits on this leg, on the front, front left one. Sometimes it takes more. Let him charge. Go up and charge R2. Okay, there we go. And yeah, when he, when he staggers like that for his head, you want to try and abuse hitting his head more since it's kind of broken. You do a fuck ton of damage. 
and if you're not if you know you're not gonna be able to kill him pretty soon with those hits get away from him because you saw how i died there earlier just standing too close i i mean i didn't have enough health to tank any damage really it was the biggest thing but either way just like pull back try and hit him when you can safely and then you might just have to deal with maybe one more attack at that point um you're gonna have enough resources maybe to pop another pellet and paper on him but you got to be mindful that i mean if you're early on in this are early on in this category you'll pr maybe want to like go back to the insight bath again after this chalice and restock before greater thermeru but um yeah we don't do that in this run when you actually have a half decent time so just keep that in mind like you can if the fight goes shitty and you have to pop more materials just just do it <laughs> And you might have to buy more in between these next two. All right, so this part, um, we're gonna go to the third door on the right and then drop in the pit. And then we're gonna hang right here and we're gonna actually need to hunter mark out. Even with the elixir up, this guy is kind of a dick. I just get behind the lever, hope for the best. All right, Amygdala, I'll make another save file for. Sometimes you can kill her in like less than a minute and then other times the fight lasts like six minutes So it's just it's one of those that's just it's just a hard fight. Honestly She's it's like an endurance test on some level If shit hits the fan like just survive her attacks, but you can kind of like You can kind of tell what she's about to do most of the time that being said she has some attacks that it feels like she animation cancels a little bit and does way faster than she should. I don't know why she's like that. Uh, that's probably going to kill your run or kill you at least. Uh, Cause like, she'll just like come out of one attack and go straight into another and just smack you around. And sometimes it one shots you and you're just like, Oh cool. Thanks. <laughs> but I'll practice. I'll show her a few times at least. Um, there's actually a really cool opener you can do if you, I think I'm trying to remember if I popped the pellet after the door or before though to get this strat. Basically you want to run in. I think this is what you do. You run in, you open the door, you pop your pellet and then you sprint toward her and it baits her arm slam attack. And then you come back around really fast and you do an R1 and three L1s on her, like kind of her front right arm. And that'll immediately get you an arm stagger. And after you get the arm stagger, you can kind of abuse her arm for that broken limb damage. And then you can kind of work on her other arm and work on her head. I think optimally you want to save the head stagger for the last phase, but I just kind of get it whenever I can really. Hey Mike, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try popping pellet after I open the door here, but I'm going to pop my paper right before just to see if I can get that strat where I run toward her and try and bait the slam attack. I'm trying to remember how I do it. Like I really, I really don't make it to the chalice as much these days. Yeah, I'm gonna run straight toward her. That wasn't the attack I wanted. That's fine. Get a little bit of head damage when you can. Yeah, though I just like work on her arms and stuff. I ran in too fast there. You can see the nice frame drops they have, right? That's cool. Oh, she's gonna do a head slam here. This is easy to punish. Now, when she's in phase three, get between her legs. I'm gonna punish this. Pop another pellet if you need to. Watch out for her leg slams. You can actually hit her in the, the like chest there, though. You can kind of hit her crotch here. If you like extend your cleaver, if you like that. 
Uh, that was a, okay. That was a very average fight. Like we can definitely do a lot faster. But it's just I didn't get the opener I wanted. That was that was a slam attack. But she has one where she extends her arms out like really far, and it makes it really easy to get the full rotation on her at the beginning. I'm gonna try and bait it again. Maybe I should try it with no. I think I do pop the pellet after the doors open though. I'm pretty certain that felt right. I'll try it again though. I mean, there's just some RNG you gotta deal with, you know, throughout this whole game. What opening is the boss gonna give you? <clears throat> but yeah, I'll do this fight a few more times and we'll move on to the the Queen's Chalice. That's a, that's a heck. <laughs> I think that, bo I think the bosses in there are worse than these. The Queen herself isn't that bad, but like fucking headless bloodletting beast and the Thamerian descendant, old man. Good god. He's such a bitch. Okay, that's the opener we wanted, but I fucked up and missed the my follow-ups. Be careful when she transitions to phase two. Her opening attack sometimes is bullshit. Roll that because her range is way further than it looks. You can charge R2 this and then go into a visceral if you get the early head stagger like that. And then I'm gonna go for her arm stagger if I can. I'm missing it. Get underneath her. Get ready for the punish go back. Hit her in the crotch with the extended cleaver. Watch out for the foot slams. I'm not hitting her just where I need to. I'm actually missing the damage. But yeah, that the fight was, I think, a, maybe a bit faster that time, even though I didn't get the chance to pop another pellet. But that's pretty much the essence of the strat. Like, go for the arms and go for the head, and then phase three, stand underneath her, extend your cleaver, hit her in the balls. Yeah, the balls. <laughs> and uh, just bait jump attacks. And it might look like it's free to just like, like when she jumps, you just kind of walk over and start hitting her head, but it's easy to get like smacked down there in one shot. So just be careful with your positioning. Cause you don't want to run too far out, otherwise you die. But you gotta move out a little ways. Oh, something else is like to know where her head's gonna land. You kind of look the direction of her tail when you're behind her. And you can kind of see about where her head's gonna smack down. All right, we got the good opener last time. Like her, she gave me a good attack, but I didn't, uh, oh, that's a bad one. I didn't follow up with it correctly. I'm just whiffing everything today. But it's all up to you how greedy you want to be. I do like that sort of R1 L1 combo and then this smack with the Extended cleaver. sloppy I got hit but like yeah it works <clears throat> I'll do her one more time though so why not 
But even, even as bad as these fights seem to be going, these are pretty fast in terms of how slow this fight can happen. Because you can do her as fast as like less than a minute, and sometimes it can take several minutes depending on how peachy you are. But if you're aggressive with limb breaks and stuff, then you should be fine. But it's like you be aggressive, you go for limb breaks, and then you kind of put yourself in the position to get counter hit and one shot by her attacks. I don't know, just... Just be careful. <laughs> I'm gonna die now that I said that. She's giving me all four openers, by the way. Not get any staggers, man. Uh oh. I'm just gonna get my pellet pop, that's more important than getting the extra damage right now. Get up underneath her and start hitting her crotch. Look for her tail. And then you can hit her head. Alright, I'm not going to show that fight anymore. Those, those are all half decent. A little bit sloppy, but you can definitely do it under a minute. Alright, now you think the easy or the hard part's done, but now the, the marrow ill is... Ugh. Hey, Yoon, Yoonkin, Helsing, Weegrath. Do you need the running R1, L1, no one to stagger? Or R1, R1, L1? That's just up to you. Like, try and count your hits and what attacks you're doing. Uh, my, my main focus on that fight is to like make sure my pellet's up as much as it can be and like just do, get a bunch of L1s after my R1s for the, the beast meter buildup. And then I think about, I don't know, it's probably about seven or eight hits on her head. Depending, usually get the, the head stagger. All right, so here we're gonna go, okay, we spawned here at the bottom. Um, you can't use this gravestone, by the way. Um, so we've already used these three. So I'm gonna actually go up here and make the, the, the queen one. Uh, keep in mind what your materials are. If you feel like you need to restock, then go ahead and do it now. Because, I mean, you can come here and spend your insight to restock, or keep in mind you probably bought extra of things, so you can you go here and hit R2. And if you have like a bunch of extra pellets and stuff you purchased, you can pick them up here. But for now, all we're really going to do is just come, and since we have enough materials, we're going to go down to Great Thumeru Hill Chalice. You can see all those Ritual Blood 5s we bought earlier. Those red jellies that we picked up in two NG cycles. Those Arcane Hazes that we made with the Arcane Haze Extractor and the Living String from the Brain of Mensis. So make this one. And again, check your check your materials. Make sure you have enough you're comfortable with. You're going to need pellets and paper for these bosses. How long have I played this game? I started playing it about two and a half years ago. Roughly. Alright, I'm definitely going to be making some save files for the, all of these bosses as well. Okay, here we need to get our hunter mark out, ready to go. We're going to get the lamp because it doesn't say no lamp in my splits. 
Which, I mean, you don't really do any no limbs at this far in the game. And then we're going to open this door and take a right. And here, you kind of want to, like, if you run straight through that, if you run at an angle, you're probably going to get hit. But if you run, like, straight through and then angle, uh, you should be able to bait it and then be fine. So we go right there, and then we take a left at this door, and we go up a ladder. Careful with the trap there. Go all the way over here to this ladder. You're going to, it says bridge, so that just means the only bridge here, you're going to cross it. So here's our bridge. We cross the bridge. And we can only really go to a door here, so we know to go here. And then this part, you just pretty much get across. You can go left or right, just get across the way here. Um, and we're going to end up hunter marking out. This is a part where it's just a lever, but if you can, try and mark out in front of this guy. That's a good example of getting hit through the lever. But you probably should have marked out on this left side because you can get kind of you can get further back behind the lever if you go on that side than the other. Okay, so that's done, and now we're gonna go left. This is one of the rare doors on the left. So here's where the boss is. Uh, this guy, you don't have to pop anything for him at the start because whenever you enter the arena, um. He's like all the way at the back. So you kind of, I guess, depending on how you look at it, you kind of have time to pop what you need while he's coming at you. Arguably, I guess you could start sprinting toward him if you already have everything popped and make the engagement sooner. But I just walk in the door and then use that time to pop blood bullets, heal to full, pop paper, pop pellet. And then this fight is, I, I'm not good at him. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't have like a really good strat for him. I wish I had something consistent, but he's, he's one where you need to get really good at his parrying. So you just gotta keep that in mind. Just learn how to parry punish this guy. And also when he goes to transition into phase two, you want to be on top of him. Um, so you can backstab him. His, his, not only does that interrupt his his transition, but also it does a you know a lot of damage. So like backstab into a probably visceral. If you have the stamina and you're kind of greedy, you can do a backstab into another charged R2. Uh, I'm more than likely just going to backstab visceral and if I can. And again, please understand, like this is probably one of my worst fights in the game. So it's probably going to be really disgusting, but uh, I'm going to try my best just to like parry what I can and punish him. So I'm gonna, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna run in first. And then while he's coming at me, I'm gonna pop my blood bullets. I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna pop this. I'm gonna pop this. And then lock onto him. I actually wanted to visceral that. I don't know why I punished it the way I did. Yeah, I'm gonna visceral these instead of following up with L1s. I'm gonna dash L1 him in between that, and then depending on what he gives me, I'm gonna try and get more parries. That one's really easy to, to parry, by the way, when he does that delayed attack. Just wait, also delay it yourself a little bit, and then go for it. All right, he's about to go into phase two, so keep in, like keep track of him here. Definitely keep track of him here. Get behind him as fast as you can, backstab before he gets the thing off, and just rinse and repeat. Dash L1, get behind him again. He's so, see how slippery this fucker is? He's always trying to dash around. But yeah, like I said, that's insanely sloppy. I wish I had a better sort of consistent strat if it was possible, but he's just scary as hell. Yeah, it's on PS4. All trophies is so brain fuck. But yeah, that's pretty much most of it. Like, like most smaller bosses, I guess, learn how to uh, parry what you can and just be mindful of backstabs being a, a weakness to most all of them. 
like, like I said, it does a lot of damage, and most importantly, it interrupts his transition. If he gets that transition off and he gets the dual blades, like it turns and it's kind of like the the keeper, the defiled keeper. Once he gets his transition off, the fight gets so much harder. <laughs> so that's like your top priority when that when it gets to that point of his health. Once he gets, I think it's around half health, he's able to transition. So if he's at half health, just keep keep tabs on where he is. You need to get behind him really fast. So we're going to parry into a visceral and a dash L1 him. He's probably going to back up, trick your weapon back, do the same thing. This is actually a good opener so far. And we're getting him really close to the wall, which is not good. But. You see, I missed the backstab there. I went for it, but I just fucking missed. Now, y'all get to see how this fight is when he has dull blades out. It's like scythe. What are these things called? stuff so it's like really fucking hard to do damage okay there we go get a parry I like to top myself off here like peach peachily because I, I don't understand this phase well enough It's just so stupid hard to parry this guy when he's like this. I I don't know what to tell you there. I haven't practiced that phase at all. Um, but yeah, that's why it's so important to um, get that backstab off. I went for it. I was in a good position. I just angled it wrong. <laughs> so that's what happens. Again, this is kind of good, I guess, when shit hits the fan. So you can see how how awful this fight can be. But... I need a cough drop. <laughs> That's because I like them. BL4 chalices are insane. Yep. I had to do that for my NG Max challenge. I just had to come in here to be able to get, get to the point to farm gems. And holy shit. <laughs> this boss was a treat. But let's try that again. Hopefully this one goes well. Because that was a... That was a heckin... Heckin special thing going on there. But yeah, just get good at get get familiar with his combos so you can visceral I mean you can parry his stiff and visceral him. Yeah, so just kinda do this. I think you can actually parry fish this guy like you do the keeper. Mr. Awkward over here. I'm gonna go ahead and put on a new bulb paper, I guess. I need to pop another pellet, but he's not gonna let me. I can't even move. Sir, could you stop? My god. You see why I love this boss so much? Now he's gonna back up in a bad spot, probably. Okay, we got lucky there. Alright, most importantly, like, you can try and R1 him here, but most importantly, just get behind him. Do not miss that backstab. 
Okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say fuck this boss and not practice him anymore because I'm just embarrassing myself at this point. I'm, I truly am absolutely dog shit at that fight. I'm just gonna pretend all that never happened. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go on to a better boss. Mr. Headless Bloodletting Beast. Is Salt Cleaver the best weapon for all trophies? Not necessarily, but in general, it's an amazing weapon for the for the game because it's a starter weapon. And you, uh, uh, yeah, it's a starter weapon, so you get at the beginning of the game, and it's really versatile and good at building up meter and just does what you need it to do. Okay, here I just kind of know where to go. Um, my directions are pretty simplified here, as you can see. But yeah, you just want to go this way. Probably use an elixir. Get a hunter mark ready. You're most likely going to die, even with the elixir. Case in point. <laughs> you do actually lose a lot of time when you die, by the way, versus marking out. So depending on where, sometimes it can be like 15 seconds if it's like a, a big combo attack and you can't get out of it if you're trying to mark out multiple times. Sometimes you just lose maybe like 5 seconds, but either way, it's going to always be faster to quit out for ladder cancel warps or just hunter mark out. I guess the one benefit to dying though is you get, you get your vials and bullets back to full. Whereas if I marked out, I'd still have 10 vials and like... 13 bullets or whatever it was. Okay, this fight, Headless Bloodletting Beast, is uh, arguably one of the worst fights in this run. I'm better, I feel like I'm better at him than I am at the Greater, Th or the Thumerian Descendant though. I've killed him in like 40 seconds a few times, but I haven't fought him in a while, so we'll see how badly this goes. Uh, so unlike the Bloodletting Beast, I mean, the, uh, yeah, Bloodletting Beast, who we could hit in the head and head stagger, you don't really have that luxury here, so most of your stuff's gonna, most of your damage and focus is gonna be on limbs. So when you break a limb, you can punish that limb or you can go for another break. And it's like all the while, you kind of want to be mindful of like building up meter, but it's not top priority because this boss is more about, he, like, you want to stay on top of him in my opinion, and just go for his limbs, which it seems easier just to go for a bunch of like R1 attacks. I'm going to be greedy because I'm just really greedy in general. And I'm going to try and build up meter while hitting his limbs for the breaks. Um, but yeah, if you're staying on top of him, um, he's got a lot of like slam attacks and stuff he does. So you got to just be, you got to be able to roll that, obviously. And then if you do get hit, this is a boss, I would uh, definitely recommend finding a window. Don't be too greedy with it, but find a window to heal up as soon as you can. You can see pretty easily why R1s are so nice though, on this guy. Alright, that fight was... it looked stupid as hell, but I actually killed him in like a minute, because my pellet just dropped. So the speed wise it was kind of fine. I mean like I said I have killed him in like 40 seconds before. It's just it's just a sloppy boss fight to me. Like I feel like no matter how good you are it's going to look retarded. Um 
but yeah i you can see how many l1s i missed like i was super greedy i was trying to go for l1s on his limbs and i missed probably like five at the beginning like in the first like 20 seconds i just whiffed attacks over and over and that's why r1s it's like arguably better just to spam that and not worry so much about building up your beast meter but worry more about actually connecting with your hits it's just awkward as well because your camera is so funky here because he's on top of you and it's like hard to see your character because like <laughs> he's blocking it and different things so it's just it's just an awkward ass fight through and through See how we can way better aim our shots with R1s though. I'm gonna try and heal up if I can. And that one took probably like a minute 20, maybe even a minute 30. It's like, I don't know. Just try your best to keep your materials up, keep yourself topped off, and punish his limbs. Sometimes he kind of derps out, and because he can't really see, <laughs> I guess. He just kind of stands there for a bit. I don't know if that's entirely intended, but especially, especially if you're really far away. If you're really far away, it makes sense why he just stands there, because he probably loses you. But... If you're, I mean, if you're in a speedrun, you want to be on top of the boss so you can always be doing damage. But you can see, like, the windows I had where I had maybe lower or even completely gone or completely depleted stamina. I'm, like, using those as opportunities to at least heal. I didn't get a chance to really buff, but let's try that again. And fire paper is actually really nice in this guy, so... If he's standing still, I might go for some extra L1s. Wait, I'm just trying to keep track of everything is the hard part. spammy with his jump backs you just want to kill somebody it's so annoying this is actually a good fight though that was the best fight I've had for that that was probably like 50 seconds ish roughly I would take that <clears throat> that's enough of the headless let's go do the queen now um, again, no more skipping lamps at this point in the run. Like, there's just not any opportunities to. So just have your... Actually, you need a bold hunter mark here. I just remembered. It's actually in my splits. So, the reason is, you need to buy, uh, Ritual Blood 4s for the Ailing Loring Chalice. So, I'm gonna actually swap out my, uh... Maybe, I don't know, just find something in your bar to swap out. I have everything here, like, maxed out with, you know, every slot's filled. Because, I mean, I'm constantly using it all, but... Um, yeah, make sure to get the lamp. You're going to need your elixir for this part. Okay, we're going to jump in. You can pop... Well, you don't... I guess you don't have to use your elixir here. I like it for this NPC, though. I'm going to pop it about here. Get your bold hunter mark ready. You're gonna hang left. That NPC right there. I just, I'm scared of him. <laughs> I'll be honest. 
Um, but yeah, feel free because you have you have so much insight in this run. It's easy to keep keep a nice stock of elixirs and stuff. So why not use them? And then you're just gonna run this way. It's a pretty basic layout for the last the last like major chalice at least. And this one, he shoots a lot. So what you can do is just go back here as usual, but it's like even easier because he's just trying to shoot through a lever and it's really easy to block all the damage. Okay, now we're to the queen. The last like truly difficult fight. It's not, it's not that bad, especially compared to some of the, like the last like six or so bosses that you've had to deal with, but it can be a little bit meme with the baby. There might be a way to deal with the baby um, and be able to bypass the crying because what happens is the mechanic, the big mechanic of this fight is when the baby cries, there's going to be a little window where if you're next to the queen while the baby is crying, you're going to get stunned for like a few seconds. So what I end up doing is just moving away, let the baby shut the fuck up and then I go back in. And again, I don't know if there is a way to deal with that easier, but Another big thing, when she warps away and she's going to come up with two clones, you can actually have a consistent opener for that phase where you can just go up where she's going to spawn like the actual one, like the real queen, and you can do a backstab punish on her. The only thing with that is if you don't kill her quickly, you're still going to have the clones to deal with. They're going to come after you like shooting blood at you and whatever. So... Yeah, this one to me is just all about, you know, build up your meter and then try and find opportunities to backstab punish her. Because if you get one backstab off on her, especially if there are no clones up, you can do like a loop of backstab visceral, backstab visceral until she dies. It's not easy to get off, but if you do, it saves a buttload of time. So I'm going to opt to pop everything before the door. This is, again, one of those instances. There are some instances where, like, you have to pop materials before or else you can't do the strat. This one, to me, is, like, kind of preference, I guess. All right, baby's crying. I'm getting out. Baby's shut up. No baby. All right, we can go over here if we can get it. Come on. You can kind of shoot these clones, by the way. There's one of the viscerals. That fight was sloppy, but I would take that in a run. You can see where I went, though. To pun I knew exactly where she was going to spawn. I was just kind of far away from it when she transitioned with the clone summon. Um, but yeah, the essence of that is like try and get to her as fast as possible, get in position, queue up an R2, get the backstab, visceraler, and just keep doing it. But like I said, you got to deal with the clones at that point, too. So be careful. This fight... So it's not that bad compared to most bosses, but that's not to say it's a free kill. Because you have to keep in mind, it's like, okay, if I one-shot her, you know, go, go me, but how long did it take you? Was it a 50-second fight? Was it three minutes? Like, you can lose a lot of time on fights like this. So again, I'm going to pop everything before the door. Just preference. I think the most important thing is getting your pellet up on her. Which is the case for most bosses. So I get to her as fast as I can. I kind of push her to the left. Get away from the baby stun. Baby stun. Baby stun. See, like, the RNG in this shit. Again, if there's a way to control the baby, I don't know how. I 
I shouldn't have gone for that R1, I should have ran. Now I gotta deal with the clones. Again, you can shoot them. Get out of the blood rain because it stacks the poison. I don't know what she's doing right now. Okay. I was trying to go for a backstab there, which is super greedy, but. Finally got it. And now you should be able to backstab spammer. Yeah. And that that's a. That was a horrible fight, but you got to see some things at least. Like as far as how you can get her in that loop. Um, but I kind of I kind of fucked up there and misread her attack and got hit a bunch. And that's why I mean you you might think like oh, we could save a lot more time in this run if you just like put everything into you know a bunch of endurance and damage and just like fuck your bit you can just knock the hell out of her but i mean not many people would think like that but just as a point like that reason i have 35 vit and potentially you might want more than that is because it's easy to fuck up and take a buttload of damage like you saw almost died there in like a few seconds and this isn't even a file chalice but yeah did you see about where i was getting though when she was spawning like pay attention to where the door is and now, like, just off to the right, like, right, uh, about, like, in that area, right there where my head is, where she, where her actual copy spawns. I'm gonna actually push her to the right, so I can be closer to that, <coughs> in fact. You see how I stayed in and got baby stunned? That's why. Now why I'm zero stamina, I'm gonna heal. So it might be wise to actually keep her over here. Oh, I missed! I missed! I was too far away. Son of a bitch! I can't get the backstab. Blood rain! You can see how, like, shit I am at this game right now. <laughs> and this baby is pissing me the fuck off. She won't shut up. Let's see if we can get it again. I don't know if she spawns here the second time. Yeah, I think she rotates. So you can see the one that the ones that are skinny and aren't pregnant. Those are the, the fake ones. That's blood rain. I'm out. I'm gonna go kill the clone if I can. I'm just playing it safe. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, that was maybe the worst fight I've ever had in my life on that. I'll do her like one more time and then I'll finish out the, the tutorial because I need to cover save files as well. There's one more boss. There's there's two more bosses you have to do. Well, no, 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 no. Sorry. There's one more boss after this. Um, he's not too much of an issue, but he is one of those awkward beast bosses that you use cocktails on and he, he's got fire and shit. I don't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, even with the cocktails, he's he's really awkward. He does a lot of like twirly back steps and stuff and you're just like, dude, sit the fuck still. Let me kill you so I can finish this run. That's exactly my thought process every time I fight him. He's such a little bitch. All right, I'll do the queen one more time if we can get a good fight. But yeah, see the, you understand how the baby works though? 
how I get stunned for like a few seconds if you don't get away. It's like a, when she starts crying, you're like, okay, get away. And then you got a little window to wait. I'm going to push her to the right again, but you can see how it's like a consistent spawn for the real queen. Be careful because you have the clones now, so I try it though. I missed it. I actually missed it. I'm gonna use this time to pop another pellet. Getting out of the blood ring. We should be able to kill her here. The baby will shut the fuck up. Alright, there we go. So that was like a minute 15 ish. Kind of shitty, but whatever. But you can see about where her spawn was. I don't remember exactly, honestly, but I think it's around. You want to maybe stand about right. Maybe use this third block and she spawns about right here ish. I don't know if that's exact, but roughly here and use the door. Use the front of the arena as a kind of marker. Go just to the right of it. Get ready for a back set. Again, though, make sure you're aware of her clones, because if you're over there backstab chaining her, then the clones are just free to open up on you. So you can target them with, like, your, uh, is it R3? I don't, I do it all in muscle memory. I think it's R3. And you can just shoot them or something. <laughs> but the bad thing about shooting them is, or lock on in this game is, it's very inconsistent. You don't really get to lock on what you want to sometimes. So keep that in mind. All right, so when we get back to the dream, this is the kind of the last thing, the last big thing we need to do. Go over to the second tab and buy um, nine virtual blood fours. Uh, be careful if you buy, if you like, you just go here and buy all of them. It should be okay. Like we should have enough echoes. You can see to do the chalice anyway. Go over to Ailing Lorne because it's only fifty five hundred, but. For just safety sake, just in case, for whatever reason, just buy only nine. Just go down twice or something. Okay, so go over here to Ailing Lorn Chalice, conduct this ritual. And these, some of the cold blood flower buds were used, as you can see, that we bought earlier. And then we're going to skip that split. And all, the only thing in here that you need to worry about is the beast. I forget what he's called, but he's a fucker. Uh, you can also do, like, a pretty cool, like like tap your lock on and release it kind of backstab chain on him as well but it's uh it's definitely not easy to accomplish um here we're gonna need our cocktails because like i was showing you earlier that that sort of mad triple the speed of a normal human being moving thing that we used a cocktail on earlier when we just marked out in front of its face we have another one of those coming up i forget what they're called they're like mad men or something i don't know so yeah, you can pull out your cocktail here. You go to the back right of this big room, go up the ladder, take right left hunter mark. So we go right here and then left down towards the madman. And we can just go like so. Get out of my way. That's going to save me a ton of time in my runs as I had no idea they were susceptible to pungent blood cocktails. It's so handy. Okay, and here make sure you have cocktails ready for this fight. And pop all your stuff. This is another one where you want to pop all your stuff before you enter. Um, I would make a safe fall, but I'm kind of ready to be done with this tutorial, so I'm just going to pop everything. And get your cocktails ready. And I, I kind of like, I don't know, I, I'm not good at this, but I kind of like run in. Immediately throw it. And then go for the backstab into a visceral. And you can kind of like, let's see if I can do the lock on thing. Yeah, it's kind of like lock on to line your character up. And then before you actually get the backstab, unlock. See what I mean?
Yeah, there's like the perfect strat. He was kind of a bitch at the beginning though because he wouldn't come forward. I don't know how to guarantee that he will though. I really don't. Okay, here we want to uh, just go to the pre-lantern bonus area, like first thing. We don't need to do anything else. We just need to go here to this bonus area. You can actually see my splits. No lamp, just go here. <laughs> okay, so you run straight. You run past these rats. And there's a ladder like way up here. I have my elixirs ready because at the end of this part, you're gonna be opening a chest and picking up the beast claw. And the ladder's just here on your left. Look left and look right. Try and find where the door is. Okay, I can see it's on my right side. I always forget. And then once we get here, this is where we're getting close to the room. But yeah, that's all you're doing is you're just getting the beast claw to finish out uh, one of your other trophies. So I pop the elixir here because it lasts like 30 seconds. And then I get my cocktail ready just to like kind of pull this kid over to the left and then get your hunter mark ready. You don't need, obviously you don't need echoes anymore. So bold hunter mark. If you have it, it's fine. I'm just gonna hunter mark out though. Be careful with that. You can see how quickly he he said fuck the. You can see how quickly he said fuck the cocktail though. I think that lasted a total of like five seconds on him. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, dude, go away. Okay, yeah. Anyway, after you mark out there, I'm sorry. I was just in like chalice mode, just going, going and going. Um, but yeah, that's it for that. That's another split. And then we have our final split. And then all you're doing here is getting the very last trophy. So we killed Garmin. We popped our cords. We killed Moon. That's one ending. The other one is to kill Garmin without the cords popped. So just kill Garmin, that ending. And then this one is to just, you don't have to fight anymore. You just submit your life. And the run's over. And you check your IGT. So just spam X here. As far as the run goes, if you're, if you're streaming through your PlayStation, uh, you gotta be careful here because you actually want to skip everything and then quit out after the next NG cycle starts. Whereas if you're on, if you're doing like a capture card or something, you can just skip this first cutscene. As soon as you skip this cutscene, your trophies are going to pop up. As soon as they pop up, you go up to close application like so, and then you split. It's like, boom. I'm not really going to split, but I get the point. So your next course of action is to go back into the game and you want to check your IGT and then after that make sure you pull up your trophies as well just to make it easier on whoever's verifying your run to know for a fact that you got all the trophies like they could actually go back and see all the ones that popped up or they could go back and see all the items you actually picked up to make sure you got everything but just do them a favor of like if you started a guest account or whatever and we got a PB for almost five fucking hours. It was an amazing run. Um, yeah, so check your time and then go back out here and go up to your trophies. And just check your Bloodborne trophies. Make sure you have 100% on both because this isn't just a platinum run. This is 100% every single trophy in the game. That's the challenge. So in, including the DLC trophies, all of these. So yeah, check your trophies and then maybe go back to this for the finish and then cut your video off <clears throat> the wormy thing what wormy thing how does it work again with the cords oh for moon presence like you need to pop three of the four cords in the run um before you kill garman and then that'll trigger moon <laughs> okay so that's the run now as far as save files go i'll cover that real fast for you let me pull up my save files. Okay. So you could see when I was, you could probably see on the actual PlayStation. Let me pull up my, uh, my stream lab so I can make sure I have the right screen up. Okay. So what I was doing for actual save files is like, I would quit out of the game like so, and then I would exit out and go to settings and you can go this, this is like, there's a quick way to do this, but I was going to application save data management. When you go there, it automatically closes out Bloodborne. If you want to load the save file to practice, you go here and pull it from your USB to the system. If you want to make a save file, so you just quit out of Bloodborne, say I wanted to save it at the end of NG plus two for some reason, I would go here, copy to USB uh, storage device, like so, select it, copy it, yada yada. I'm not actually going to do that. And then as far as what you're going to see on my PC, 
these are kind of what let me uh pull up desktop now this is kind of what um i don't want to see my face this is kind of what uh it looks like here so my save files these are all trophies these are just some of them we have and let me pull up my my flash drive real fast let me exit out of that so i don't mess up anything See, so yeah, I get that in your PC. Emory Ghetto. Hey, Duck. Um, and then we're going to pull this up. Go to our flash drive. Okay, so you can see you have several folders to drill down to. Since I play DS3 as well, this CUSA 03388 is the DS3 one, and the CUSA 00900 is the Bloodborne one. Now, how you determine that? Good luck. I don't know. But this, I just know these are the right numbers. <laughs> So the Bloodborne one we click on, and these are the, the two files that we actually need to uh, pay attention to. So if I just made a save file, like I would maybe make a folder here, like um, we'll just call it new folder, whatever. Pull, open that folder, and you're gonna copy these in and pull it over here and like just drag them over and copy it. And then when you wanna later use them, you will have that new folder here. You can drill down into it and access them. I'm going to delete that though. I don't want that. And then as far as actually um, using those save files, let's say we go here and we want to practice shadows on NG and then we access our flash drive, drill all the way down to the Bloodborne one, get these two, copy this, copy this over here, replace the files like so. And then make sure make sure it's not flashing or anything. Like let it finish before you pull it out, obviously. And exit that. And then I'm gonna swap back to console. So that's done. Now we put our flash drive back in the PlayStation. Let that load for just a second. It's still flashing. Okay. And now we go back to application save data management. And since we're copying from the flash drive to the system, we go here. Copy to system storage, select the game. I'm not doing DS3. Uh, check that and copy it. And do you want to overwrite? Yes. I'll copy it's really fast usually. Making, like copying from the system to the flash drive can take a little while, but copying from the flash drive to the system is usually really fast. Um, hopefully I was switching to the right screens there. And then here, uh, we're just going to the game. Cause you know, like last time, like when we quit out of the game just now, I was at the end of NG plus two. And I was like, you know, just submitting my life to Gearman. But I just loaded a shadow save file. You can see we're at Forbidden Woods. Something else to keep in mind is not only does it uh, carry over all of your files, like you can have up to 10 files on, a, on the game, you know, like 10 different characters. It'll carry all that over, like it'll save it for you. So if you want it to be nice and neat, I would say like maybe delete all but one. So it's not just like every time you load it, it's going to be like, here's 10 profiles and you have to delete them all every time if you want to get rid of them. But I like to keep mine neat when I can and just have one like this. Also keep in mind all of these system settings here are going to be kept. How like the default setting for this is like seven, seven, and then like seven for the music, for example. Um, but yeah, it'll keep all these settings for you on top of all your characters. So keep that in mind as well. It's really easy to screw yourself over with save files and accidentally and oh, it's like you maybe you have your max level character and you're like, okay, I want to I want to save my character on my PC. So in case something happens, I can then, you know, just load it from my my PC save files and bam, my character's back. But you go to do that and then you copy over your data from your USB to your system all of a sudden and you just overrode everything and your character's gone forever. Like, you gotta be really careful with what, which direction you're going with the data transfer. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it though. I covered everything. Um, the one last thing, I think I have a link for, is it chalices? Let me see if this is the right link. Now that's for gems. Maybe it's chalices plural. I think this is it actually. 
Okay, yeah, click on that paste bin there. This is a kind of an older um, paste bin. I think in Sil yeah, in Silico made this one. This is directions on the Chalice Dungeons, though. I'm going to pull up my actual desktop so you can see. Um, but yeah, if you go to that link there, this is what I used originally, and then I modified it my to suit my needs, and then eventually I just went to just straight up splits. So you can actually see all the crazy stuff I have in splits with like symbols and directions, like simple right and left. But yeah, you can use this to navigate through the chalices. There's been some updates since this was last made to routing and different things, and you have a bunch of ladder cancel warps and stuff you need to do if you want to. <coughs> But yeah, use that as well. Otherwise, um, that is pretty much it <coughs> with the guide.